You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. A very good evening. The Deputy of His Majesty the King and Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Glebia Palace today the Chief Advisor to the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Mr. Sefer Toran, and his accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness said the directives of His Majesty the King to enhance cooperation with Turkey come in line with the Kingdom's care for the outstanding bilateral relations in all fields and an appreciation to the historic stature of Turkey as a vital regional mod model in the development and economic fields. The Deputy of His Majesty the King noted the importance of recent leadership meetings, including His Majesty the King's visit to Turkey, in addition to exchange visits at all levels. He commended the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and Turkey's supportive stance to the Kingdom, confirming the importance of further enhancing joint cooperation. His Rohan has highlighted the shared economic opportunities and the necessity to activate the agreements that have been signed between the two sides to serve both countries and their people. He pointed out that the historic bilateral relations contributed in unifying the shared vision with regards to issues of common concern that have proven the two countries' keenness to reinforce joint cooperation and maintain regional security and stability. For his part, the chief advisor to the Turkish president expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness, the deputy of His Majesty the King, for his interest in developing Bahraini-Turkish relations and supporting joint cooperation so as to achieve progress and prosperity for both countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict No. 42 for this year, transferring the Director of Public Relations and Media at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Fahad Qasim Hamad Bouallai, to be the Director of Telecommunications at the Works Affairs in the same ministry. His Royal Highness also issued Edict No. 43, appointing Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa as the Director of Museums at the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa held a meeting today with the governors in the presence of the General Coordinator of Governorates. At the outset, the Interior Minister lauded the level of cooperation between the Ministry and with the governorates who play a key role in learning about the requirements of the public and working to fulfill them. In discussing issues related to governorates' affairs and projects implemented, the Interior Minister directed to form a security committee at each governorate to be headed by the Governor and with the membership of the Deputy Governor. General Director of the Police District represented from the General Directorate of Civil Defense, General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science, and General Directorate of Traffic. The committee shall be assigned to study security cases and governorates, coordinated related matters with concerned authorities, and propose ideas and projects to protect general order and security. The committee shall follow security situations and suggest security strategies for the governorates, in addition to contributing in the setting up of security plans and programs. The committee shall also be responsible for enhancing security awareness and study district security issues to propose solutions. Each governor will refer periodic reports to the Interior Minister on the operations of the committee. The Interior Minister then asserted the importance of taking comprehensive security measures to protect and secure vital utilities and directed the conduction of a study to regulate the working hours of shops within a general policy to protect people and their interests. The meeting reviewed a number of projects in the governorates and listened to a briefing on planning criteria for places of worship to provide them with the required services. The meeting also discussed on reports on removing deserted cars in which the minister directed to complete the process in coordination with police forces. Marking the 20th anniversary of the formation of governorates, the interior minister hailed the proposal to issue stamps depicting historical landmarks and remarkable achievements in Bahrain. The general director of criminal investigation and forensic science then briefed the meeting on the number of security cases that have taken place in all governorates from 2007 to August of this year. At the end of the meeting, the Interior Minister asserted the importance of continuing the integrated work with all concerned authorities to promote community partnership in order to meet the aspirations of the citizens and make them key partners in building their districts. He also thanked the governors for their hard work in serving the nation. The recent visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Russia reaffirms His Majesty's keenness to boost ties and broaden cooperation between Bahrain and countries of the world in the various political, economic, cultural and social fields to serve common interests. More in this report. During his visit to Russia, His Majesty the King held official talks with President Vladimir Putin during which they reviewed bilateral relations and ways to consolidate them in all areas based on their outstanding friendship and expanding cooperation. تحيات أهل البحرين وسعدنا اليوم بالمعرض 
المنظومات العسكرية الحديثة المتطورة نحن سنبل من العلاقات على ما بنينا في السابق ولله الحمد ما اتفقنا عليه في الماضي وفي طريق التنفيذ وهناك المزيد من الـ يعني الأهداف المرجوة اللي نريد تحديدها بين روسيا والبحرين وفخامة الرئيس وحكومته لهم تقدير كبير في منطقتنا عموما His Majesty the King and President Putin also attended the signing of Military Technical Cooperation Agreement, an effort to establish an intergovernmental economic committee and two memorandums of understanding on gas and oil cooperation and on establishing a partnership in geophysical surveys for oil and gas. Also during his visit, His Majesty the King visited the Russian military tech show Army 2016 and the city of Kobenka near the capital Moscow. On arrival at the show, His Majesty was received by Russian Deputy Prime Minister for Military Industrial Complex Dmitry Rogozin and the Russian Defense Minister General Sergei Shoigo. He was also briefed on the latest Russian military technology of the exhibited military equipment, including the high-tech Russian air defense missile system S-400 and the latest Russian T-14 Armata tanks. After the tour, His Majesty held official talks with the Russian Deputy Prime Minister on aspects of cooperation in the field of space science between Bahrain and Russia. His Majesty the King stressed the importance of benefiting from Russian expertise to meet Bahrain's future goals and aspirations in the field of space science. The timing of the visit of His Majesty the King to Russia reflects Bahrain's understanding that all security and economic challenging facing the region can only be dealt with through cooperation and coordination with brotherly and friendly countries. His Majesty the King's successful visit will undoubtedly consolidate bilateral ties and deepen the framework of cooperation and coordination between the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, delivered today a speech at the conclusion of the Arab League Ministerial Council in its 145th regular session in Egypt. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness during its presidency to exert efforts aiming to achieve the listed goals. He pointed out that this session started with an important step after appointing Ahmed Abul Ghaith as the Secretary General of the Arab League and holding the 27th Arab League Summit in Nouakchott and hold a number of meetings to follow up on all issues and recent developments. He stressed that the current phase requires serious reviewing of stance and decisions, setting plans and strategies and achieving new mechanisms that will be able to strengthen unity, benefit Arab countries and achieve a positive impact on Arab joint action in order to solve Arab issues, maintain its security and stability and achieve the aspirations of the countries and their people. He also noted that the Palestinian cause has become more complicated than ever because of the escalated occupation and settlement, the Titan siege and the repetitive attacks on the Palestinian people and their religious sanctities. He called on the international and regional communities, particularly the Security Council, to assume their legal and moral responsibilities in achieving just and comprehensive peace according to the Arab Peace Initiative and international legitimacy resolutions. Regarding the situation in Syria, the minister explained that the Syrian nation is witnessing a tragic state, stressing the need of continued humanitarian aid, deliveries across Syria and to all migrants in neighboring countries. He stressed the importance of continued coordination between the U.S. and Russia to reach a political and peaceful resolution for the Syrian crisis. He then highlighted the important role of the Arab League in supporting this crisis. Foreign Minister expressed readiness to hold a normal relation with Iran that is based on the principle of good neighborliness, UN principles and international laws and norms. He demanded for the immediate cessation of interference in Arab countries' affairs and attempts threatening Arab security. He strongly condemned Iran's attempts to politicize the Hajj season. He praised the efforts of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques in facilitating Hajj and providing care for the pilgrims. The Ministry of Council issued a statement condemning the hostile statements made by Ali Khamenei and the continuous Iranian provocations that contradict with the principles and values of Islam. Foreign ministers strongly condemned the measures taken by the Houthi militias that further complicated the situation. He affirmed Bahrain's commitment to continue efforts alongside the Saudi-led Arab coalition until the legitimate government became, becomes able to extend its state influence on all parts of the country, according to the UN Security Council Resolution 2216. Sheikh Khalid affirmed the importance of maintaining security, stability and unity of Libya and stressed the need for joint efforts to end the Libyan crisis and eliminate all terrorist groups. He said that all Arab countries should strengthen cooperation and face all challenges and end terrorism in order to protect the security and stability of Arab countries against all attempts threatening to undermine them. Foreign Minister then transferred the Arab League Ministerial Council Presidency to the Tunisian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Khamis al Hinjawi.
A high-level delegation comprised of global health leaders and sponsored by the WHO was in Bahrain this week to evaluate the quality of health policies and services in the kingdom. Bahrain is one of the first countries to go through this evaluation process and the results are promising. More details in this report. A joint external evaluation mission concluded its work tour of Bahrain today. The WHO-sponsored mission, which is comprised of leading global experts in the fields of health protection and management, conducted various field visits to assess and evaluate the systems and services provided in the kingdom. It seems that the, the number of countries had you know, done all this, only, only 13, and Bahrain, I think, is the, one of the uh, earliest countries that are doing this. So I think you know, all this monitoring and you know, things that about regulation, you know, how you are dealing with the things that, you know, the infection, the you know, kind of diseases, the relation between the infections of you know, human beings with the, uh, uh, with the animals, and with the, uh, this kind of thing actually uh, affects the whole thing. So I think you know, this kind of thing is very important. The visit, which kicked off on the 4th of September and lasted for five days, involved a number of meetings and technical area discussions with different officials and health and government entities on current and future policies and strategies. The 15 experts also toured the Kingdom's facilities to take a closer look at the way of work and quality of services. The mission is, is uh, aiming at improving countries' uh, capacities to uh, prevent, detect and respond to uh, different kind of uh, health threats. This is an international initiative, uh, WHO has a strong role in it, but there are also uh, other organizations including FAO, OIA and uh, experts from uh, different countries. The WHO has conducted similar visits in other countries. Bahrain opted to have this mission take place and welcomed it with open arms as it works towards its vision of sustainable quality and excellence. This uh, joint external evaluation has so far been conducted in 12 countries uh, globally and uh, uh, our understanding is that Bahrain has excellent capacities uh, in many of the uh, international health uh, regulation areas. Reporting for Bahrain Television News, this is Mohamed Shaban. And earlier, the news team spoke with the head of the Joint Mission, Chief Physician and Head of the Vaccination Program Unit at the National Institute for Health and Welfare in Finland, Dr. Tanali Pomalainen, on the mission work and findings with regards to Bahrain's health sector. First of all, we were not able to uh, evaluate the whole healthcare system. We were concentrating on uh, especially uh, health security and uh, sections of healthcare which are especially relevant when it comes to um, international health regulations and uh, issues like uh, current Zika virus or coronavirus or any of the uh, infectious diseases or maybe also uh, accidents or uh, other type of uh, natural catastrophes which may uh, face any country. And where does Bahrain stand in comparison to the region and the world? Well, um, as was mentioned, uh, Bahrain is uh, the country number 13 that has gone through this uh, evaluation. And uh, we are not comparing countries, we are not making any ranking list. But I must say that the delegation was very impressed by, by your national capacities. And uh, out of the uh, 19 dif different technical areas, Bahrain uh, achieved what we are calling as sustainable capacity, the highest possible uh, marks on, on many of those areas. That's definitely good to know. Yes. And what do you advise health officials in Bahrain to do to further improve services related to health security in the kingdom? Well, we were able to identify a, a number of uh, technical issues, uh, but uh, as I said, the overall capacity is excellent. Um, we were extremely impressed by your immunization system, as a good example. Um, you have a very good capacity to uh, detect different uh, diseases, also uh, chemical and radiation events. Um, so I would say that the most of the uh, items and issues that we were able to identify were uh, improvements to uh, already good capacity.